Hi, everyone. My name is Chica Barbosa. I'm a guest curator in this edition of the Philadelphia Latino Film Festival, bringing a special program uh, showcasing short films by Latin American artists with the theme Realities and Dreamscapes, Unconventional Narratives of the Latin American Experience. I'm excited to have here with me three incredible filmmakers with a beautiful body of work and part of this program. And before we jump into the questions, I'm going to do a, a brief introduction to each one of them. We have here Leonardo Pironde, he's a filmmaker from Sao Paulo, Brazil, based in Los Angeles, Porto, and Sao Paulo. His films explore the infinite abyss between the multiple de derived versions of reality through documentary, experimental, and narrative modes. Much of his work uses analog and digital manipulations on celluloid to examine the social political unfoldings of the intersections between imagination, science, myth, and technology. We have also here Juanjo Pereira, who was born in Asuncion, Paraguay. He's a director, researcher, and sound designer. He participated in training spaces in festivals such as Berlin, Locarno, Cannes, ITFA, Doc Lisboa. He's also the artistic director of the International Contemporary Film Festival of Asuncion. And he's currently developing a feature documentary, which was awarded at Arque, the Development Lab, which is also part of the Doc Lisboa Film Festival. Also, here is Janaina Wagner from Sao Paulo, who develops her research in video, drawing, photography, and installations. Her work aims to present a critical understanding of the way in which humans impose systems of order and control upon their surroundings. Throughout the appropriation of history and as presented through various forms of media, Wagner considers how notions of progress and legacy are articulated through a constellation of tales, facts, images, and memories. And so kicking off the, the, the Q&A here, I, I wanted to say that I was very interested in how these three short films in this program have something in common. Uh, they seem to be part of like this journey, you know, in, 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 in different territories that are in a search of understanding uh, the reality today, but this reality influenced by the past that questions the purpose and possibilities of the future. And so one thing that I wanted to start asking is if you can tell me a, a little bit about how, what was the, the starting point of this journey? What kicked off this, this search? And why the quest of the limits of reality? So let's start with uh, Jana, if you want, and then you can kick off to someone else after you. Okay. Well, hi everybody. Thank you for being here, uh, whoever is, watching us right now. It's always a pleasure to talk about the research and about the film itself. Um, well, the film that uh, that we are presenting in this section, Licantropia, Licantropy in English, uh, it was my first year film at Le Frenoir Studio de National Arts. In, there is a art contemporary film residency in the north of France in a tiny city called Roubaix. And I did it in 2019, uh, and it is around the it is a quest around the figure of the werewolf as this uh, being that mingles the limits of humanity and animality. But actually, the this research around the werewolf of mine it started in 2016 when I was doing a res uh, another residency here in in Brazil in Minas Gerais, Belo Horizonte, that it's called. Bolsa Pampulha, uh, and it's a six months residency in, in the state, Minas Gerais. That is the state that has, that has the, uh, the largest amount of mining fields of, of, in Brazil uh, of mineration. And then the, the research that I, the, the project that I sent to them before I, was, I went to the residency was to develop a research around the the, the uh, stopped mining fields of non non active mining fields of Minas Gerais, and then when I was there, once that when I was getting uh, on a flight to leave uh, Belo Horizonte to go to São Paulo, right next by the airport there there is a huge one uh, iron mining field that is really huge. And then once the, the plane departed, uh, I was up in the sky and then I, I looked down and I I saw into this gigantic uh, human hole in, in the land, uh, mouth of a wolf. 
or maybe of a werewolf. And then I got to the this image of uh, of this disactivated mining field as a werewolf of our times, where the the remaining landscape would be the wolf and the the torn apart uh, part would be the human. Uh, this human shaped nature thing. No, that is that can be this landscape of the mining field. So we started there and then I developed, I started to develop this huge research around the image of the werewolf, the image of the werewolf in Brazil when I had already a connection with friends from that time. And then when I moved to France to do a master, I continued to develop this research. And then finally, when I went to Frenoa, I decided to do almost like a, a fanzine of the figure of the werewolf, a collage of all of the references that I had, and this outcome it's in the Contropia in the film. Oh, incredible. Sorry for my English, that is a little rusty, but it's no, it not better. at all. Not at all. I'm sure everyone <laughs> will understand. Speaking. <laughs> no, not at all. It's it's perfect, actually. But very interesting because I was, you know, I know that you have this. Uh, figures and you know the myth and folklore part of your body of work somehow and I was curious just like you know when this figure appears so it, very interesting to hear that it was through a flight um, and just a quick yeah. question before we jump into to the other ones so this th this mixture also of elements uh, I I was wondering about the text you know the narration of that was that is that text also like an assemble of different yeah. things yeah it's also it's also an assemble this is like a dispositive that i use a lot in my work that is to rewrite texts of others or maybe reappropriate texts of others and then mix with texts of mine and all like it is a college of images and it is also a college of texts and i try to create the Im other images through the text that are not on the images itself and to mix them all that is the same process. It was an incredible text, very heavy to, you know, follow it, <laughs> but uh, incredibly written. So interesting. Thank um, you. Juanco, do you want to go next? Yeah. 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 Thank you for, for this invitation. I, I'm really, really glad to, to be here and talk with you and all the people who might see the, this video. So thank you. And I don't know, this, uh, my journey to this short film was really, really different because I, I, I was like, uh, my brother lived in, at that time, was living in Dubai. And I just, I just went there to visit my brother because I, I have free tickets because my, my brother works in, in this air, air company. And I was like, yeah, I want to know Dubai is free. Why not? And I just uh, traveled there and I found them like a different, I don't know, it's all different there for me, for, for Latin American people or, I don't know, you know, there you, you go there and you see like these buildings, this future. And, and I just, I, I, I was there like for a, a month alone and with my camera and shooting everything. And I was thinking every time, like, I think that this is built in, in, I don't know, in a way on the desert, you know, this, all this imaginary city is like a, a render city is in the, in, 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 in this part of the world. So I just, uh, I start to play with the idea of what is natural and what modernity. And I just, I want to present this idea uh, that this, I don't know, this battle between the desert and the, this, modern buildings. And I think that was the main thing in this short film. And it was really, 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 really crazy for me being there uh, and, 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 and shooting all this stuff. So I, I just enjoy the, the process, enjoy also the sound. I don't know, everything was so different in, in a way to, I don't know, to hear what, how, how, do, how the, the desert sounds. How, how it's the sound of the desert and how you, you can mix that with the sound of the of the people who live in this imaginary city. So I don't know what I think was uh, that was my my whole idea to to put this in 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 the name also of you know, the short film is called the impossible future 
and I think is is this contain is maintain battle between this natural and modernity. So this was my proposal. So I I just I think what's that? Oh, so okay. So it was something casual that become this this answer right to this trip. But um, the expo was that something that you also just found by by coincidence, or was it something that yeah. you there afterwards? No, I that that, uh, that was in twenty twenty was the pandemic, and uh, that year was that's I think was the the main date for the expo, but they changed it for twenty twenty two, and I was there in twenty twenty one, so. Yeah, I was in the in this uh, like uh, at the beginning of 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 they uh, they are like preparing all this expo stuff for all the all the all the countries all the and all, all the buildings. So I want to shoot this, and they like told me no, you can go there. That this is this is private. So and I I found this footage, the this uh, render uh, footage, uh, the how is going to be these uh, buildings, you know, for the expo. So they they mix these, uh, like, the these things, like the cultural things of Dubai or or all the imaginary about birds and all this stuff. They mix the build the buildings. It look like like um, the cultural stuff of, of Dubai people. So I, I just have the, this idea because I can go there. I can, I can, like, I can go to to shoot in in this building because it was, I don't know, so private and so policy. I don't know. So, uh, I just start to think how can I imagine these buildings, and I and I go to to the official page of the expo of that year, and I I download the the renders, all the all the all the virtual proposal for the for the expo. Oh, amazing. You kind of like jump into things that I'm going to ask you later about, you know, that the figure about the bird. I thought I was fantastic, but we'll we'll get into that uh, in the next one. Leo, you're next. Yeah. Um, hi. Thank you uh, for watching. Thank you for programming on the film. And yeah, so it, um, it began with this look into this imaginary island uh, that was a mismapped uh, island called Brazil. That existed in maps for like 200 years um and with this investigation it started to it started like to create a film uh that was just about these islands and things like this but then uh as i also researched for another film they kind of collided um and the film about simulations and digital environments uh kind of blended in because it felt like it just worked perfectly um with this idea of like discovering a new environment and like this idea of colonization the same way as uh people are describing the new world or the new frontier of digital uh technologies nowadays um and so i think those two kind of like blended together and yeah thinking about the entire like situation in brazil with like fake news and misinformation and doubting systems that are like in place i think was um a way of like imagining this voyage of military people who doubted this uh inexistence of an island and going after this and trying to build this idea of utopia uh which for me it's like very similar to the people who were developing these technologies and they want to create this new world but they also want to own it and they want to create this utopia in the digital environment so i think this collision between those two uh, seemed very interesting and i think the film explores these ramifications that kind of uh, arise from these and yeah that's kind of how it took shape yeah well amazing maybe we can start like with with the question specific now that we're talking about you know your film um because you know your film introduces us to it, it, these images and text um, that refer to anomalies ghosts these cartographies and uh this virtual reality and the idea of utopia right so basically like our, our conception of reality, uh, but in a very surprising dialogue between all the layers of the film, because, you know, we start with this conception of, of this discovery, right, of this island, then we dive into these other characters that explore the conception of reality. 
So could you talk a, a little bit about those layers that, that came on board? I know it was because this other film that you were doing, but you know, just choosing how these images and characters along with the narration, like expanded all the symbolisms and meanings of, of our reality and the futuristic reality. Yeah, uh, I think the layers kind of came together. That's how I usually make films. It's uh, it's usually multiple ideas that kind of like blend together. So like it's not that it was a separate film that kind of worked. It was just like concepts that kind of collide and become one. Um, so I think for each of these like layers that you're describing, um, I was like looking for um, someone who like did a uh, video game and how they would uh, render an environment. And that was very interesting. So David O'Reilly, this like famous animator, uh, he was kind enough to like kind of have this conversation with me. So that was kind of research, but then ended up being part of the film and then filming with him. And he's like someone that has a creative approach to these uh, uh, ways of creating environments. And then on the other hand, I have the like another person who is a scientist and the um the the woman that like explores the quantum aspects of our reality and how she would in a way describe these uh just the way we look at reality and those started being very similar and so i think creating the text that i did uh for the utopian and imaginary part of the military journey um i think kind of arise from that a little bit it's like how to kind of create this like narrative threat in a way that will will in a way connect these layers of scientific and technology development and all of these um together in a way that feels right uh yeah this is kind of like the process in which it took shape yeah and you mentioned that you started with the map right that was like the starting point uh why why the map the map because actually those those images at the beginning those are very fascinating with the text so wondering how that you know you brought up with that yeah i had just finished a film about uh, an island uh there was a digital environment island um it was a kind of a exploring the uh book by renee dumal in search of mount analog so that book uh, made me start thinking about landscapes of islands and I wanted to make an island film that wasn't related to the book. Uh, so I started researching islands and phantom islands, uh, the whole concept of a phantom island, which it is something that is like a mismapped island that existed for many uh, generations through like in maps and older cartography really renders those like phantom islands. But it's even more fascinating that uh, People really write about Phantom Islands, but they don't write about the sea monsters that exist in the maps. Like, uh, so this idea of a map that was so real and helped cartographers uh, travel the world uh, and map the world was also very creative and imaginary in its core. Uh, so the whole idea of like how everything in the map is in a way imaginary, like the entire representation is uh, just fake in a way. Uh, they try to do whatever they think it's right, but again, they don't have satellites, so it's, you know, it's very creative, uh, the whole approach of creating those. So that um, the look into those imaginary islands and imaginary spaces were very interesting to me. Um, yeah, so then exploring those maps, I just felt right to kind of bring that into like a film of its own instead of exploring this Phantom Islands as a whole. Um, yeah. Yeah. The choice, <laughs> it worked. <laughs> um, Jana, for your film, I mean, continuing on on the conversations of the limits of of reality, and we come to this werewolf that you mentioned, this hybrid creature, um, and I think it, it was interesting because in your film we are transported in in this incredible fable, uh, fabula, uh, on that in between of of comprehending. Uh, history and you know also its metaphors uh, on the horrors of colonization and imperialism capitalism but we're also transported in the delirium of the in-between of the form right between fiction and reality which I think you you work on this very beautiful so could you share about that hybrid process uh, you know those decisions and and how the text influences influence those images and yeah the conception of images You're muted, Jana, yeah. sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, at first, when I was starting to develop 
uh, the script or the storyboard of, of the film. I had this idea that I would I was going to put everything that was supposed to be real in color because I was filming with pellicle. And then all of the appropriated parts or glued parts, they would be in black and white and to, to have this uh, Xerox machine uh, kind of look. Uh, and then once I had everything shot and when I was working on the montage, I thought that it was more interesting to mix the reality with the fiction than to and then to leave to the uh to the viewer to the viewer to the spectator to create this distinction in their minds if they would like to then me uh, as a director uh putting these limits between one and the other because if i was talking about something about a creature that it, that it is that creature of boundaries, of limits, uh, and that exists in the limit. I I should try to do the same thing uh, with the form of the film to uh, match the the content of it with the form of it. And then and then afterwards, I I thought that it really worked because because. I think in terms of form, of shape, if you leave everything under a same uh, denominator, uh, then everything has the same uh, weight and everything can be real and then everything can be uh, a fiction somehow. And I was also trying to think about the power that fiction has. And then once you believe into a fiction, the fiction uh, gains uh, real real weight and it doesn't matter if it's a fiction or not what matters is how you deal with it and and i was i was trying to bring this in terms of shape to the film and then this i think that this solution of putting everything in the same uh, look of the black and white created this kind of of fanzine in the end uh, I don't know if this, if this is a Portuguese word or Tanzini when you collect like uh, images of things that you like and you glue it everything on a book and you do like your own magazine as a fan uh, it is your uh, frame of the things that you like that creates this fanzine and it was I was trying to take all of this and frame it through what I wanted to bring and and then and then do the film. And the text was really I think maybe the first thing that I that I had was the song, uh Shiva de Prata. And maybe it was like the entire film it was created for the song because I was always thinking that if it is a, if it is a silver bullet that kills a werewolf, how could you inverse this and then I thought that maybe it's a rain of silver and then there is the song Chuva de Prata uh, but I thought about the song as a text not not as the as this song chanting on my head I was thinking about this text of a uh, silver rain uh, almost like a bullet that goes and then it's like the rain that follows and then it reinverses. this so it was it is always the text that leads to the images I always start from the text and then I Imagine I find a way of creating an image that uh, goes along, go along with the text. I'm I'm not sure about fanzine. It might be I'm not sure. Leo, it might be something like a scrapbook or something. I'm really not sure. I feel like <laughs> it might be something similar to scrapbook. Um, but it's very interesting when you say about the weight of fiction, right? When it suddenly it, it becomes real and. And when you mentioned, you know, the silver rain, I think that image that we see in the film of the silver rain uh, and you have the metamorphosis of, of the human with the wolf, I think you managed to do that. You managed to really expand the image, you know, and its meanings. And I think that maybe that's the powerful thing about fiction is when you're able to, to just expand the meaning of reality somehow. So it's very important interesting to hear that because this the fiction scenes they're very they have this aesthetic that brings you in in a different way as the other material 
And so you're navigating through this lecture and uh, you do feel the different weight, right? You do feel the different way when you're seeing, you know, more about of, of this collage and then you have this, this more uh, conceptual images, for example, the sex scene and all of that, where you clearly are, uh, you don't let the viewer maybe choose his interpretation, you're actually putting in them to read exactly what you're showing. So I feel like that's, that was a powerful thing about that. Yeah. And, and I always I always feel that, I don't know if it always, because this was the first film that I did that had a, well, that I not that I didn't sh uh, shot it my, by myself, that I had a, a, a budget, that I had a theme, so it, that it had uh, a structure. And I think this is something that maybe differences documentaries than fiction is the structure that you you have for making the making the image. But at the same time, uh, it is real that I that there was a wolf walking on on the streets of the city. It is real that it, there was a silver rain on the city. Even though we were creating uh, something staged, it happened. So I always think that even though when you are doing fiction, you are doing something that has a, that exists, no? So, and states after. Yeah, and the process fiction blends with reality always. And yeah. That's my favorite part. <laughs> um, Juanco. I mean, you you dive a little bit into that in, in, in that first question, but, you know, your film raises the question about the future and technology, and it, it's really fascinating how we're watching your film, and it's, we're transported into this new territory with you, and, you know, it's almost like we're experiencing the desert itself alongside you, um, but can you expand more on the idea of the title, The Impossible Future? Because uh, I think that was very interesting to relate to the to the film, um, and then also if you can explain also in in that idea of how you related those images that invites us to like understand this temporary structure better. So that image of the eagle and the design of the mock up, if if you can tell me about a little bit more about that. Yeah, I I think also that the the short film has this uh, idea of uh, of rep representation. And what is real and what is not, because for me it was like a very surprising when I, I show the first time the, the sh in in a in a movie the, in a movie theater the the show film. I, everyone asked me that uh, the because the show film start with the first shot in this train that you go to with with the train and you go there because the train has no driver so you can like I can put the camera. At, at, at the front and I go like in the train myself and you you can travel with me in, in this in this travel to the camera with the camera so uh, everyone asked me like uh, if that shot was animated you know if I don't know if if uh, I, I, I make animation myself about this city and no I just only put the camera there and I follow the the train. And looks like animated, you know. Looks like because the city looks like animated. You 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 are you are there, and it's like this is not real, you know. And and I I can put the camera, and you can interpret this idea and what is real and what is not. And, and for me, what that that was a starting point. Like ah okay, this is like I I I I play with this with this stuff, and uh, and I play with with with. The representation of how uh, the city uh, is will be for the for the um, for the expo or for the future, and and I also I I I went there so I I, I was like uh, looking what is this city and I I saw this race of you know, they have like this crazy thing like they in the desert they. They had like uh, we I don't know we have horse racing in in this in the cities or thing like that. They have bird racing, like they they put in, uh, in the in the bird they put like a helmet and something like that, and they they throw I don't know I don't know how how this works, but they put it through different birds in the desert to compete with each other. You know? 
So it's it's really really crazy. And then you can I don't know you can you can see in the in the renders the this idea of of the representation of the bird in the buildings. So I know it's a mix. Like this is real. Who who is going to win? And who is going to win the nature of the render, you know? And and for me, the 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 the, the most, like I know in the in the short, I I I was there and I I I live I experienced was like crazy, was a sandstorm. Like you you are there and 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 I don't know it's like a it's crazy. It's like a hurricane, but it's, it's from sun, and you can you are like. Everything is sand there. Everything is desert, so it's natural, like a, a, a sandstorm. And I just wondering, like, I know this, these buildings are going are are not going to last, you know, like in uh, and ten years or I don't know in fifty years, the the sun will win <laughs> in a way. So is is this idea of the impossible future, and you can. We, as a society, we can put buildings everywhere, but the nature is stronger, you know? So this is like my idea, or I don't know, it's a question, more like affirmation. Like, uh, I think it was, this is the, split, the, the thing with the impossible future. No, it's incredible because it, it, it seems like a city that look, that dive so much into the idea of future right that they kind of like forget where they are in the present and uh it's almost like this this times don't meet each other right and and so when i when i saw that title it was really interesting to to relate it to the film once you see it because it's clear it's clear but i just wanted to hear it from you from your words um and then that, yeah <laughs> it was really nice but then the the image of the eagle that you you right it, it's a bird it's a it's yeah it's an eagle uh and then the sign of the mock-up you know you we see these drawings that kind of like makes us understand you know the, the this this idea of of the reality and this conception of the future how they're blended in their imagination was was that something that you found or uh was curious because it was really interesting to see those images of, of the drawings the, the drawing was the i just don't download of the of the uh, promotion video from the from the from the page from the Expo 2020, you go to the oh. Oh, I don't know if you're working, but you can go there and you can you can you can say the all the propaganda, all the promotion videos for the building for the for the because every country has their own uh, pavilion. I don't know how to say pavilion or like uh, the main main space, and so. You can, I don't know, you think like you are in Dubai, the, 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 this, the crazy city in the, in the world right now, and you have the Expo 2020 is like the more, uh, um, every country presents the, 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 the best thing in technology, the best thing in, 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 in health, of health or technology or, I don't know, whatever you are presenting, you are the, you are, you are presenting the, the best of your country can offer. So it's, it's the mix of like the future. You, we can present the future. I don't know, Japan presents robotic, the States presents, I don't know, uh, the whatever, and they are making new things. So I think in this, in this idea was like, I was in the future, yeah, and yeah, like in Dubai and the Expo 2020. So everything more like crazy. <laughs> Interesting. Thank you for that. Um, and another thing that I, I wanted to just, you know, ask uh, all together, I know we discussed a little bit about this, but I think these films, you know, they dive so much into the, 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 the process of the images and, you know, they have something coming about the editing composition as it includes archival elements like maps, 3D tours, engravings, a dog show. So wanted to, to know if you can share a bit more about the process of finding these elements and including them in the narrative like is do you find a narrative during the process of the edit or is it during the research if you can maybe talk about specific images um and maybe share about the process because i feel like sometimes you know especially 
the audience who are not used to like see maybe experimental films like this or unconventional storytelling like this, the edit is such a crucial thing. And it's interesting to understand like how, how is the process for each filmmaker, right? From this image, this other whole scene comes. So maybe if you can share a specific thing about these films that explore your, your narrative process. Um, Leo, you wanna start? Sure. Um, yeah, I think uh, I feel strongly about a few images that I think guided the uh, process throughout. I'm constantly like shooting and editing because um, yeah, I'm working on 16 millimeters. So I'm like shooting, developing and like having to scan and watch. Like, so there is also this like time between filming something, imagining what I shot and then actually seeing it. So this process kind of makes it interesting because I keep already trying to fit within the film uh, throughout the process. But yeah, a lot of these uh, images on the film. So I think the uh, like the forest that you see uh, rendered on the computer, it's like a real engine. And that is like a process of making that like simulation on the computer and then shooting out of a monitor. I think that was like a very strong um, way of working and like trying to find like frame a digital camera in an environment and then having to place then the, the film camera within my like living room to film the screen um so that for me was kind of like how do i find this moment of like something that looks real within this simulated world um and i think for other images like the maps uh like those sea creatures for me were very strong and like pool of narrative in a way like in the an invitation to in a way imagine these environments or imagine these you know people traveling through the ocean and imagining these creatures and uh, like in living on that edge between reality and fiction um yeah and I think all the other like more documentary parts kind of um I think they're like in a way uh, like shot similarly and like trying to find someone like world in a way and go into someone's like either house or lab or trying to like inhabit their space uh like this hermetic world in a way it's like you know they have very different uh aesthetics and you kind of meet the person in a way um yeah so I think that's kind of how these narratives and where they go and uh the sequences that happen I think are you know driven by that uh, a lot of times and trying to again if I'm in a space that like this is the most conventional way I could shoot it I try to not do it and try to break these ideas that I even have in my mind like the preconcep preconceptions that I have before I go to somewhere and then when I get there like I try to do in a way the opposite and see what happens um, yeah I think those are yeah and yeah, I think also rendering the landscape of this imaginary place, uh, again, it happens three times in the film. So it happens through maps and then it happens in this beach and then it happens in a foggy like beach landscape. Um, yeah, so I think trying to render those images are also part of like trying to find, because um, the island doesn't exist. So trying to find that world into within my world. And that was kind of an interesting way of uh, working that's the one that took longest to work with uh yeah because I had to imagine and I had to like know how it would work on the film so again this constant process of like back and forth between editing and having like gaps of like just black leader and having to imagine like okay how do I make this part of the film work and like really massaging and polishing each part uh yeah yeah, I feel like that's the most fascinating thing about working with, you know, different mediums in that sense is like you process the film in so different ways, you know, throughout the narrative. Um, and in your case, the text, right, because there's also a narration there that drives us and it's a very eloquent text. It really, it's very clear and, and it also expands the meanings of the images. So if, can you tell me about that? When does the text come and, you know, how do you work in between uh yeah the text was um was again i think the the one that took the longest the whole island part like was the one that took the longest to kind of settle in a place that i was happy with um yeah the text is like ultimately like it's mine but like it's again 
I think as Janina said, it's like it's pulled and like mixed from other sources and like mixing or rewording things that I like about text and um, yeah, reading about utopia and like, you know, these um, ways of describing place and journeys and yeah, a lot of, yeah, that's kind of how I approached it. But yeah, it, for me, it was the, it was the last thing because it felt like the, the other parts were like more constrained in a way. And this was like my part in the film. Like it's my way, if every character in the movie, like every person that speaks essentially, or at least are in frame, uh, have a little section in which belongs to them in a way, um, this would be like my section in which I could do whatever I wanted. And um, yeah, I couldn't do all of that. So I also have the like, robot voice uh speaking and yeah it was nice to work with someone uh to make that voice happen and yeah it's kind of like adding these textures and layers to the film and uh yeah it's been a long time now since i made it so like it's it has like recall of it uh but yeah well that's a good thing about revisiting our process is like sometimes we end up forgetting and it's when you recapture it's almost like wow you're like discovering things yourself and just by curiosity, and something that maybe Jana and Panko can answer as well, was there like a, a text or a book that, you know, somehow was maybe a, a little bit of a, you know, starting point for this that you you would mention? Because the texts are, it's very interesting. So I'm curious just to know. I think, I, oh. no, 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 go for it, go for it. <laughs> no, I, I just, uh, I remember that I have my notebook. Like, I know, like, I was a travel, and, like, in a way, I, I was in a new land, in a new territory. So I, I saw the, these, like, people awake in, at this time. It's so hot. I don't, I don't know. I remember it was so, so hot because I was there in summer. So it's crazy. It's, like, 60 degrees. It's, like, crazy. And, uh, yeah, I remember that. And with, I don't know. I don't want to put myself in because was a in a way was a road trip in a in a in a way but I don't want to put myself in 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 the movie with my voice or my presence so I have no character so I I put the the camera like the main character and uh, I put the text like three uh three three lines just I I'm here and this is my reflection about this thing and and only that and I I just want to I just want to play with the with the editing process because I myself I I found the the, the share of the movie edit, in in the editing process while while I was editing you know and I I don't have like a script in in the, at, at at the beginning or I just were like, I have this, and I, I talked with the editor, so I have this, I don't know, I have this material, and we, we can make the difference between the virtual material and, and the rendered material and the, the, the shots. And um, yeah, I, I think for me it was like starting to present in the city at the beginning, the city of the future, and the end, the desert. Like, that was the main uh, structure. I think I think we see a character, Juanjo, to be honest. I mean, it, it, and in that sense, I think your edit process, it, it was so on point because it, it's really almost like it's scripted, to be honest, like because you, we start with a training, you know, it's, it's very almost like lyrical of how we're getting introduced into the space. We're getting understanding this, you know, these visions about the city, the landscape, and then the expo, and then, you know, you're not able to shoot it. And then you're reading the city after that experience. And then we end up in the desert. So I feel like you shot all this. And that's why I really like this film, because it's it's how your experience in a very, you know, common way end up being a reading that drives the, the audience alongside you because I were able to read all that experience while you're, you know, the the the, the way you edited it, it was really well presented in a sense, but you, we clearly see a character, you know, we clearly see someone experiencing that place for the first time. Yeah, it, it, it was, I want, 
I yeah, it's I mean it's a character that was me, but without saying, you know, like was like is 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 that the thing? Uh, yeah, and and like Leonardo said, I don't know, I don't remember why I put text. I, I just I, I I just prefer like I, I I make this animation, you know, with the sun and the text it looks like the same thing. At the end, I I I. I I play with this. I, I have this animation of the sun and and the sun disappear and and start the credits. It's I don't know, I just want to play with the ideals of of making a graphic design part of of the movie, you know. Uh, in, in in a way. Yeah, and it worked beautifully. I loved it. Jenna, do you wanna Talk about this delirium process of yours. Uh, you were you were asking about the text of reference of something. Well, there are many books that I was reading at the time to, for the research, but there is this poem by uh, a Brazilian poet called uh, Desu Pinhatari that is called uh, The Werewolf Lobisome. And then this was something that a friend of mine sent it to me back then in 2016 when I was doing the other residency and the poem also stayed in my head during all of this time and it's the poem that you see on the beginning of the film when you have the uh, purple text and then the land that is collapsing uh, this is the poem and that for me was something that was a uh, trigger also for the entire development of the film because it talks about some uh, this werewolf as something that it's not, it, it has this relation with the moon and it's almost like if it's a skin uh, that gives contour to a body, but it's a body that it doesn't have, that doesn't have a shape. And it's so beautiful that I, I don't know, it was something that I think it was, the entire film is trying to, it's not even, it's trying to, to give a shape to this being, but without wanting to uh, arrive to do it. It's just about the trying to do, but I didn't want to find a solution. It was just, yeah, trying to. And that's the reason maybe, that, that, that that's why maybe you chose to have all this collage, right? Because you want to this kind of like structurize it in a way that you're looking for that shape, but you're not able to fulfill it. So yeah. Which I think that yeah, was totally. fascinating about about your film. Could could you maybe just expand about like how did you find those elements, all this diversity? You know, I know you had some fiction scenes in there, but you know, there's and oh, I forgot the name in English, engravings, right? Like uh, all, yeah. all these elements. If you can tell a little bit about that. Uh, well, in my late in my earlier work when I was still in the university, I was already working with video, but I was working a lot with appropriated videos from YouTube. But this was in 2010, so it was re really different than it's now. YouTube was really something new, and, you, and then when I found out that this portal existed filled with videos that people, for some reason, decide to film and decide to upload it and make it available for others, I, I I, I dove into it and I, I don't know, I had a, like a database of many different things. So when I was researching uh, for Lycanthropia, I had already this practice of digging into the internet to find videos that would be, I don't know, uh, something that I was looking for, but it, that already existed because for instance, on the footage, uh, on the footage of the beginning, there is this wolf on the zoo that it's being uh, like like a trick. You no, know? the the ladies they are telling him to how. For me, it's more interesting that this exists already uh, than that it's me producing the scene and getting a wolf and making it to how. Because for me, what is interesting about this is that this is something of our culture and it's like this exists in a zoo. Uh, somebody from the public uh, found that it was interesting, so it filmed it and uploaded it in the internet. All of this movement is more interesting for me than if it was just me by myself going and like setting up the whole sequence and shooting it. The sequence of the end also, it's something that is a tourist attraction in France, 
where they have the hunting dogs and once a week or once a month maybe they make it into a public spectacle for the tourists to see they they being fed so also again for me it's interesting that like it is a, there's an expectator that it's behind the sequence and then it's not me uh filming it so yeah uh and the engravings also i was also thinking that uh I was trying to think about like the the first uh story that shapes a little bit society that that can be Cain and Abel the like the first killing and the, this this like dance thing that develops into like many things of our history afterwards and about the desire of the of the other, you no, know? because I think the main thing about Cain and Abel it's is the desire of one being wanted to be desired for the by the father more than the other is, and wanting the desire of the other, and it's always a little bit this that we are pursuing, you know, like the desire of the other. And then I when I I thought that maybe a way of breaking this like from the root was that thing that that story uh Cain decides that he doesn't want to play this game any, anymore and he goes away and he and then he makes a pact with the moon and the moon transforms him into a wolf so Cain would be the first werewolf of the history like in my in my tale <laughs> because he didn't want to he didn't want to consume this uh pact of desire and he wanted to put desire into something somewhere else into freedom maybe so but but it was like i i don't know i was there for it's uh it was eight months the entire uh, process of doing the film like conception and shooting and editing but it's a really intense residency because it's a very small city it's a very cold and dark place with nothing to do so it was really a very very intense uh process when you are like apart i i think this film would be impossible to do if i was in sao paulo for instance because i have my i have a life here i have things and there it's like you dive deep yeah and you and i can totally tell because you know we followed this and you know, uh, this epilogue is so, you know, you watch it and then you're you're drawn into that, right? And so it's interesting when you see, because you talk about Kaim and all, and all these elements of your research and, you know, we end up with this vision, this this mix of like the, the desire of, of, of hope and then, you know, actually ending with something else. So I thought that was that was very powerful and interesting to see all this you know elements just tied up together and a really incredible incredible film um leo you were just about to say right about one of your texts maybe if you can just finish with that and then we can wrap this incredible conversation i was just gonna add uh that since as i mentioned i was working with um the the book uh in search of mount analog and the idea of like rendering this imaginary um island and yeah that's that's all it was oh, just a small okay. thing by the end but that's fine no good to know it, it there was a reason that I wanted to know because you know I felt like this these three films are such like a journey that it's so well you know crafted and you can see that it was you can see a search you know of of yourselves as an artist and just like these images and sounds are almost like the result you know of, of this constant search throughout the process it's very clear and so I was curious about that. It's really a curiosity. And I think everyone who watches them, they they wonder like how, you know, where where is this cert, this intensity coming from? Um, but I wanted to thank you for 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 this incredible work. Um, I really liked, you know, these three films. It's a really unique experience. And I wanted to to appreciate, you know, give you a thank you for this time, for sharing some notes. And to everyone watching these films, thank you so much for your presence uh, in the cinema, online, and participating here today on, on, on this Q&A for participating in the Philadelphia Latino Film Festival. And we, we invite everyone to check out the whole program, but especially the feature program of Latin American artists 
who transcend boundaries and beckon us to immerse ourselves in the kaleidoscope of their diverse perspectives, territories, and experiences. Gracias y hasta pronto. Thank you so much, Anaina, Juanjo, and Leonardo. Thank you, oh, Chica, awesome. for the invitation. Thank you. This is my... Oh, there it is. Well, well. <laughs> there you have your werewolf. No, I have a werewolf. <laughs> Thank you so much, chicos and chicas. Bye. Talk soon.